Okay, let's get started. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for sticking around. It's uh, late, conference is winding down, uh, long past lunch. Getting time for the customer appreciation event tonight. You guys uh, excited to go relax a little bit? Hear some good music? Uh, maybe I'll see you there. I'm, uh, I'm about ready to blow off some steam myself. Uh, so let's spend this time wisely and uh, look at something that I think is pretty cool. I'm going to talk about cloud integration platform services. Okay? So that's the kind of generic name. We'll find it in detail what those are for, what those can offer you, and how they apply to Spark and Tropo APIs uh, and developers and kind of developer curious people. <clears throat> uh, who here is familiar with Cisco Spark? Ever seen a demo or you use it? Great. Now I won't have to walk walk you through uh, what's cool about Spark. Uh, hopefully you uh, uh, have an idea what that is. Uh, how about Cisco Tropo? Any, anybody here familiar with that service? I may spend a, a few words explaining when that is. If we have uh, time at the end, we'll uh, integrate that in with the, the main demo that we're going to do. Uh, talk about, real briefly, some of the key API features in Spark and in Tropo and what kinds of things you might uh, want to use them with, especially with these kinds of uh, uh, integration platform services. Uh, introduce the concept. <clears throat> Take a quick Hello World tour of uh, some of the more popular ones. Uh, if this, then this. If this, then that. I'm missing a T. Zapier and built.io. We'll write some real quick little one function func uh, sample applications in IFTTT and Zapier, and then go into a little more depth with uh, what I think is one of the more sophisticated tools. Uh, Built.io, Spark and Tropo. I think we're pretty good here. Uh, Cisco Tropo. For those of you who are not familiar with it, this is a cloud-based collaboration platform. And what it does is marries uh, the public switch telephone network, so regular mobile phones, landlines, uh, via voice calling and SMS, right? So they terminate a whole bunch of calls into their uh, data, cent data centers, and they have them in the US, Europe. Uh, and they marry that with an API platform on the back end and also an application hosting service uh, so that you can handle uh, telephony, you can handle SMS messages. Uh, and uh, drive those with automation built using standard web scripting technologies uh, like uh, JavaScript, uh, Python, uh, Groovy, Go, those kind of things. Uh, so <clears throat> it's a great way to hook up your applications uh, to really uh, enable them in, uh, to anybody that has uh, a phone in their pocket, not just a smartphone. So just to kind of uh, compare and contrast Spark and Tropo, uh, the Spark APIs currently are about creating rooms, creating teams, putting people into rooms automatically, uh, sending messages to people in rooms, all within the Spark client, application-driven notifications and reports. Uh, so if you're a sysadmin, if you're a network administrator, uh, it's really easy with a few lines of, of you know, bash script and a curl request. Uh, or some Python, or uh, in, essentially any other programming language or platform uh, to use Spark as a message to deliver notifications uh, and actually to interact with applications from within the Spark app using interactive chatbots. In fact, you can take that a step further uh, and using the OAuth integration, you can write applications that people can actually log into using the Spark single sign-on service uh, or, your, uh, or the cor corporate service uh, that's hooked up to it. And then your applications can do things on behalf of essentially any user that logs into them. So that all happens in the Spark universe uh, with the, in the Spark messaging platform. Voice and video is coming in uh, a couple months, uh, the ability to automate that stuff. Tropo, like I mentioned, is all about uh, regular old telephone service, PSTN. There's a lot you can do there. Uh, sort of the two most 
uh, recognizable examples are an inter interactive voice response, so a voice machine, an IVR system. If you're a company, especially a small company, uh, that would like to have an IVR to take uh, some of the pressure off uh, your receptionists or your, or your support people, uh, it can be difficult or expensive to, to you know, obtain the IVR hardware, hook that up to phone lines, uh, buy licenses, and then try to program it, keep it updated, et cetera. Uh, Tropo provides a cloud service where with a few lines of web, you know, regular language uh, web scripting, um, you can build a complete interactive uh, voice response system with uh, you know, uh, excellent speech recognition, text-to-speech, um, transcription services, multiple languages, uh, hosted with phone numbers and access points uh, uh, all over the world. Very easy to access uh, without having to have any hardware at all. On the other end of the spectrum, there's SMS. Uh, so if you want to send SMS messages to uh, people who are your customers or your employees or friends or uh, just the soccer team. Uh, it's easy with a few lines of Python script, for example, uh, to ingest uh, you know, a common delimited uh, a CSV file or a database or some other source of numbers, uh, intelligently process that data, and then send, in fact, interactive SMSs, right? So you can notify people uh, with a question. They can respond with an answer. You can process that, process that and turn it into uh, a chat kind of messaging situation over SMS. Again, you don't need any hardware. Uh, all you need is the Tropo service uh, to build that using standard web technologies. Uh, it includes recording and tr transcription, as I mentioned, uh, powerful conferen conferencing features. So if you have um, <clears throat> a bunch of support staff that are uh, constantly on the road, you can create, uh, using Tropo, uh, a conference room where you dial their phones. You can play a message that says, uh, hey, there's an emergency situation. Are you available to join the conference? They press a button. You can interact with DTMF with the users, put them all in a big conference room, uh, conference room uh, that Tropo hosts, uh, and start the conversation. Um, and I, you know, we have uh, example scripts uh, that show you how to do that in you know, a few dozen lines of code. Okay, let's get to the cool part. So integration platforms as a service, what are these things? <clears throat> these are similar in that they are cloud services. They host applications or scripts or zaps or recipes or whatever they tend to call them, but they're essentially uh, programs uh, that live in the cloud that you can uh, create, typically using uh, point and click options drag and drop, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> and the other thing that they do is integrate with all kinds of services. Uh, so if we go and look at some of the things they are capable of, for example, let's go look at the list of integrations that Zapier has. It's really extensive. All right, so they have integrations with Google Calendar, with Dropbox, with Facebook, um, Office 365, uh, OneDrive, Cisco Spark, Cisco Tropo, Box.com, hundreds and hundreds of cloud-based services, cloud-based APIs. Um, in fact, uh, there are integrations with IoT-type devices. Uh, so your Nest thermostat, um, your uh, smart uh, home automation stuff that controls your lighting, uh, and the timers. Um, these services have integrations uh, built into those. And what you can do is mash them up. Right? So you can trigger on one kind of action that happens in one service, uh, do multiple uh, processing steps, push out actions in other kinds of services, essentially writing a program, a mashup program using all kinds of different uh, services across the web, um, and do that in a point and click manner. That's pretty easy to do. So what I found is that uh, I, I tend to use these services uh, quite a lot, actually. You know, I, I can go down and uh, write applications in, in Python or JavaScript, or if I really had to, maybe C++, I'd break out the books. Um, but if I want to do something quick, simple, kind of one-off, uh, a proof of concept, I want to demonstrate how something could work for somebody, uh, these are excellent tools for that. Uh, 
you know, it's these are tools that uh, with a little bit of training, people in your PR department, your event organizers can use this uh, to create create you know reproducible, semi uh, changeable uh, workflows uh, that they can program themselves without having to bring in your development staff to do it or write uh, even a single line of code. So we talked a bit th about this already. <clears throat> Uh, Tropo and Cisco Spark have worked with these companies to directly integrate their services with our services. And so uh, with Cisco stuff and all the hundreds of other uh, cloud services that have done the same thing, you can do some uh, really powerful workflows. Some use cases. How would this uh, work out? So very simply, you can trigger on your Dropbox account. So you can say when a particular file that uh, my team is keeping in Dropbox, I keep documents in there, someone adds a new doc, I want to automatically send a message to the team Spark room <clears throat> that says, hey, this new document was added. Be aware. There's a link to it. They can click on it, go directly to it. They can talk about it, give feedback. A couple, couple clicks to make that happen. Uh, there are options to uh, automate your mobile phone. So your mobile phone can trigger uh, an IFTTT script. For example, if you walk out of the house or uh, go, you know, go to the airport, um, you can send notifications to your uh, colleagues in a spark room that you're you know, leaving the city or leaving the country uh, automatically. Uh, again, very easily and without any code using the Spark API capabilities. <coughs> Zapier is uh, a little bit more flexible, a little bit more sophisticated, um, but requires uh, just a little more uh, effort to, to learn and use. Again, we'll see it's still pretty simple. Um, it supports things like uh, web forms. So you can use WebFoo or Google Forms uh, to really uh, create simple surveys or sign up forms. Uh, those kind of triggers can then kick off these scripts. Um, you can uh, collect you know, people's email addresses and information. Uh, perhaps for an upcoming event, uh, and use that with the Cisco Spark APIs uh, to, uh, as we'll see later, like create a room, invite these people into the room, send them an S SMS message, uh, letting them know uh, that, that it's available. <clears throat> Integration with Zendesk, Zendesk for example, uh, if you have that system and you're using it for trouble tickets uh, and support with your support team, there's a trigger. Uh, that you can use when a new ticket comes in, uh, and you can filter on that, that will kick off one of these workflows. Uh, so you can say, if a new Zendesk ticket comes in that matches these criteria, uh, send an alert to the Spark room where those support guys live and work and talk all day long. <clears throat> if it's a new incident, maybe we want to create a new Spark room with the incident uh, number as the name of the Spark room. We can add in the responsible engineers that are going to work on that. And with Tropo, we can send them an SMS on their mobile phone to let them know, hey, the new incident is happening. Here's a link to the Spark room. Let's work this out. Built.io is even more powerful and flexible. Uh, lots and lots of options in there, uh, including uh, the option to uh, you know, type in some code if you want to. Uh, I think it's a really cool tool, uh, very flexible, uh, but you can do you know, really sophisticated things there. Uh, there's a sample uh, on the Cisco Spark blog about uh, an Office 365 integration that automatically translates uh, Spanish-speaking emails into English in a Spark room where the support team is. All right, here's a, another example where a web form <coughs> is filled out and inserts a record into Salesforce. Salesforce has an integration with built.io creates uh, a task in a Trello spreadsheet, inserts an appointment in Google Calendar to call the new customer, um, and then uh, you know, hooks that up to Spark and Tropo for further notifications. All right, what's that look like in real life? I'm going to change my screen resolution here real quick. So it's going to be pretty tiny. That ought to do it. So let's look at if this, then that. This is the simplest to use. 
still has all kinds of things you can do. <clears throat> These are all free for anybody to sign up and uh, play around with. Uh, obviously, if you start using uh, lots and lots of their service, they will at some point uh, ask you to pay them a little bit of money. Um, but they're, all of these things have lots of examples, right? Uh, so tons and tons of scripts, recipes that you can uh, you know, open up and modify uh, that mix and match all kinds of services. All right? So you got uh, Alexa, <coughs> Android devices, and so forth. Let's create one. What we're going to do here is create a little IFTTT uh, bot or service that uh, connects to my Twitter account using the Twitter integration, looks for a particular hashtag, and uh, anytime it discovers a new tweet that matches, it's going to put it into a Spark room. Right? So your, your PR folks could be in there. Your marketing folks uh, could be in uh, pretty much real time uh, getting notifications of new tweets uh, about a particular hashtag that matches your company, for example. <coughs> Really easy to use interface. If this happens, you click on the zit this, and we want to trigger on something that happens in Twitter. So there's a couple of things we can tweet on. New tweet from search. Let's try that. And let's use the Cisco Live. Hashtag for Euro. So if this happens, then do that. In this case, we want to use Spark. We want to post a message to a Spark room. So at this point, <clears throat> it's going to ask you to authorize your Cisco Spark account. You'll type in your usual Spark username and password. It'll show you uh, what permissions it's going to request or, or need to, to uh, do this kind of action. You can approve that. Uh, as you can see, it's already connected to my account here. Um, let's find a good room. Test room. These are, this is a list of all my rooms. You can extract certain fields of information from what Twitter gives us. So we can get the actual text of the tweet. We can get the username of the person that made the tweet, uh, a link to the tweet, et cetera. And you can uh, uh, include that in the message with uh, the formatting that you like. Create action. That's it. So you could show just about anybody how to do this, right? All you really needed to know was the hashtag. I'm going to go ahead and kick off a test run of this script, see if there have been any tweets since the last time I checked this. And look at my, let me look in my test room and see if we get anything. May not, may not have been any new tweets since last time. We'll, we'll keep that running and uh, see if we can find anything in a minute. Ah, I heard something. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, this is coming from the IFTT service. <clears throat> this is the user. This is the, the actual text of the tweet, and then a link. All right? So you can click on that link, open it right up in your browser, for the full Twitter experience and do what you need to do with it. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Let's see how we would do this in Zapier. This is a similar service. Like I said, a little more flexible. Instead of just an if this, then do that kind of formula, uh, Zapier lets you do multiple actions. Uh, so if uh, a new tweet occurs, uh, for example, or maybe the opposite, maybe someone posts a new message in a special room, that Zapier is modifying, a special Spark room, Zapier can then uh, relay that message to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram uh, all automatically. Okay? So let's create a new Zap. Make a Zap. That's what they call their 
applications here. Triggering application, again, this is going to be Twitter. We're, we are going to check mentions, and we're going to search for a particular tag. I've all, already authorized a couple of uh, Twitter accounts. I'm just going to test this, make sure it's good, nice. Again, we're going to search for the Cisco Live tag. All right. <clears throat> what it's going to do is make a test run. Test successful, so it went out and grabbed the last few uh, tweets. And we'll see why here in the next step. The action that we want to take when uh, a new tweet arrives has to do with Cisco Spark. We want to post a message. Well, I just want to make sure this uh, Spark account works. It does. I've already authenticated the service to use that. So the Zapier service goes out, um, gets a list of all my Spark rooms. Let's use this one here since it's at the top. Now, <clears throat> this is where we want to craft the message. It's blank for the moment, but if we click on this button here, we can see uh, that we get all the various Twitter fields, again, that we can use in our message. Uh, so let's put the username in there. If you'll notice, there's a lot more options here, right? So this is a little more advanced service. Twitter actually sends you a lot of different uh, pieces of information that you can deal with when you get a new tweet using this uh, API. But we're going to stick to uh, the username, the text, and the link, as we did before. Maybe I missed it. Try again. Mm. I'll just use the user URL. That's probably a link to that person's profile, but it's in there somewhere in the long list. Uh-oh, step one has an error. What did we do wrong? OK, not sure what happened there. All right, so this was the test tweet that it grabbed earlier. It's showing us a preview of what we uh, should hope to see when this works successfully. I'm actually going to create and continue and finish. So we're going to give this a name and activate it. <clears throat> So a few more steps. Uh, like I said, uh, in addition to this action, we could add additional ones down on the bottom. So we could do multiple things at the same time based on this trigger. Uh, but if we go back over to rooms here, looks like we already got a, group, a new tweet. So very similar to IFTTT. Again, pretty easy to use. I think uh, anybody that uh, understands uh, a little bit about what APIs and cloud services uh, are, is, are doing uh, can, be, uh, can be successful with this. Yes, I think so. All right. So you get a uh, certain number of actions per month. Um, I can hear uh, my IFTT uh, 
one going crazy as we process tweets. So I'm going to run that account out probably by the end of this session. <laughs> so don't forget to turn these off if you're using the free account. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to something uh, a little more interesting, <clears throat> a little more complex as well. Uh, but again, uh, could be easier than coding, depending on your point of view. We're going to talk about built.io. These guys have integrations not only with Cisco Spark, uh, the regular APIs. Uh, they also integrate support for uh, creating and interacting with uh, Spark bots. So you can create, easily create interactive chat bot services um, that you can add to your room and us users can interact with. Uh, it also has an integration with the Tropo cloud service, Cisco Tropo for voice uh, and SMS. So what we're going to create here um, is something that uh, I actually used and our team has used in the past uh, when we're setting up and getting ready for events. So we would like to have a Spark room for all the attendees, all the invitees for the uh, upcoming event uh, to be put into, right? So they can ask questions before the event. We can send them notifications, directions, you know, doc share documents with maps and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, then during the event, we can com communicate, we can make announcements. After the event, we can send out links to surveys and things like that. Uh, very handy to be able to kind of create rooms on the fly uh, for upcoming events. Put you know a bunch of people, five people, a hundred people, a thousand people uh, into these rooms <coughs> automatically, uh, and then do stuff in there. And if we get time, also show you how once we successfully add people to this room, uh, we can notify them via SMS that they have been added. Maybe give them a link and says, "Hey, you've just been invited to this event." Uh, we're going to use Cisco Spark as a collaboration tool leading up to and during and after the event. Uh, here's a link to go download it. You know, uh, sign up for free and start the conversation. So let's see how much we can get done here. We're going to use the uh, enterprise version. <clears throat> uh, again, this is free to use for limited uh, numbers of actions. So let's just look briefly at w what one of these things look like, looks like. <clears throat> so this is actually a d almost a design environment, right? So you have uh, little boxes that you can drag around and connect to each other. There's little options on each one. Uh, there's a drawer over here with lots and lots of services and subservices of services, uh, tools, developer tools, FTP, spreadsheets. Uh, lots of stuff that you can put together in a graphical uh, development and d design environment uh, to build something uh, you know, really sophisticated. In this case, we're going to start out with the blank flow. And we're going to start here with the beginning. <clears throat> Always a good place to start. We're going to configure the trigger. So in this case, uh, say we have an upcoming event that we want to get ready for. Let's use the clock trigger so that we can send all these notifications and uh, add all these people to a room on a particular date. All right, so if we know the event is in three and a half weeks, we may want to go ahead and add people in the week before. All right, so we've triggered the, triggered the script. What is the first thing that we want to do? Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and create a brand new Spark room. So we're going to look for Cisco. Oh, nice. They also have WebEx integration. Cisco Spark, we want the create new room action here. We're going to hook those up so we can indicate the logic that uh, this application flows on. We're going to configure this option, this action. Uh, we're going to choose a Cisco Spark account that we want to use. All right, so what is the, the name of the room that we want to uh, create today? 
Let's call this the Thursday event. Not too hard. So the next thing we need to deal with is, uh, you know, we could add one person in there by just uh, using the create membership action and filling it in with a hard-coded email address uh, and room number and all that. But we what we want to do is be able to, you know, perhaps grab uh, a spreadsheet uh, from the registration system that may have, you know, dozens or hundreds of email addresses in there and process through them so that we can do all this automatically. We're going to use Google Sheets for that. Google the Google spreadsheet service. If I can find it. There we go. We want to get all the rows of information from a particular Google spreadsheet. Now, just like the Cisco Spark service, uh, I've already authenticated um, my Google account here. So I'm going to select that one. It's going to go out and offer me a list of the spreadsheets that I have available. And let's just go take a look at what that looks like. There it is. So very simple. <clears throat> I've only got two names and two email addresses in here, two phone numbers. But this could be you know, an indefinitely long list. And there could be other fields of information in there, right? So this could have been captured from a registration system or something like that. So that's the spreadsheet ID. Uh, it needs a spreadsheet name. Uh, by default, there's always this uh, sheet one. So that's the one we want to use. And that's it for this action. All right, so we've went and pulled down all the data out of that spreadsheet into built.io. What we want to do next is uh, essentially a programming loop. We want to sequence through and process uh, each of these uh, things one by one. So let's go look in the tools area uh, and grab the loop action. Now this one's interesting because it can actually contain other stuff. In this case, what we want to do is uh, add all these people to the room. So we want to do a Cisco Spark action in here. Now, putting in someone into a room is called creating a membership, right? So users are members of a room. We want to create a new relationship between a particular room and a particular user. Let's drag that in there. Make sure it's hooked up to the sequence. All right. And now that we're getting close, let's go and hook up the end, the stop action, to the back end of the loop. <clears throat> so the way this works is the loop is going to go around and around, processing each of the rows in this uh, database one by one, doing this action on them repeatedly, and then it's going to stop. We do need to fill in a little bit of information about this um, create membership action. I'm going to use the same Spark authorization. Now, the room ID is interesting because we can actually get this automatically. Um, over here in the input area, these are all the variables that have been created so far in this script. Uh, the very first thing that we did, the first action was to create a room. Now, as a result of that, uh, there was some data sent back from Spark that included the room's ID. When we created this room, uh, we got a unique ID that belongs to that. So we can have it automatically populate that value into this uh, action. The email address. This is uh, who we want to add to the Spark room. That comes from the loop objects output. <clears throat> So every time we go through that loop that we looked at a second ago, uh, all these things are going to change for each row in the, in the database or the, the spreadsheet. 
Uh, so the index item key, the value is what we're actually looking for, right? So the value is going to represent all the data that's in that particular row as we work our way down. As we'll see, it includes not only the email address, but uh, it's an array that contains all of the fields that happen to be in that row. So we can get that automatically inserted, just like that. <clears throat> Now, built.io, uh, as far as I can tell, and from talking to the engineers, uh, is built uh, on top of a Node.js runtime. Um, and you can actually peek into the Node.js uh, JavaScript code of this system and manipulate it if you need to. <clears throat> In this case, as I mentioned, uh, this row of user information that we're getting out of a spreadsheet is actually a JavaScript array. What we want to do is get only the very first element out of there which was the email address, right? We only want column zero. And programming arrays start with zero and go up to one and two and so forth. That's how we do it in JavaScript. <clears throat> okay. We just use some square brackets. Since we know this is an array variable, we want the very first element, which is uh, at index zero. And that should pull out just the email address that we want. So we're going to add somebody to this particular room using this particular email address. All right. Let's save it and see if it'll run. What's cool about uh, built.io is you can actually see this script executing in real time uh, in the case of what I'm doing here, it'll give you errors. Something bad happened in the create membership. Hmm. Maybe it's this field, current item that I need. Hmm. I could have sworn it was current value. That should be the room ID. I'm going to go look at my cheat sheet version. There it is. Yeah, that looks about the same. Do you see something I did wrong? It's the same? OK. Well, we're getting towards the end of the session anyway. And uh, as you can see in the final version, I've expanded this a little bit. <clears throat> uh, in addition to putting people into the room, we're going to use the Tropo service to send them an SMS. Let's look at how this is configured. Uh, so on the Tropo service, you can create, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, web language-based scripts that you can select from. In this case, there's one just called SMS Relay. Uh, so this is really one line of code in a Tropo script that accept, accepts a phone number and a message uh, and then sends out an SMS to the target. The phone number is, uh, again, something we can pull out automatically from the loop. Uh, we want, instead of the zero element, we want the one element, which was the phone number. And this is the message that we're going to send. You've been invited to the Spark Room. <clears throat> we can even pull the title of the room out of the create membership uh, output that we did before. Now, in case this is something I've run into, um, if we just went through and tried to add 1,000 people as fast as we possibly could, the Spark service will actually throttle you for, to kind of make sure performance is shared amongst everyone using the API. So I use this delay object to put a one second delay. And you can tweak that depending on uh, how many people you need to process and how much time you want it to take. And then at the end, um, we use the post message action to send a welcome message to everybody that's in the room. All right, so this uses markdown format. 
So it says, welcome to the Spark Room. It uses double stars to make that bold. Things to remember. Uses uh, underscores to make that italic. Uh, bulleted list of things to remember. <laughs> so the result should be that everyone on that list gets invited. Uh, and then everyone sees the message. I've also created some parameters, some custom parameters for this script. So that uh, instead of having to go in and uh, you know, click on and reconfigure the action, for example, that creates the room, we can have some parameters, one called room name here, uh, where if someone is using this that didn't create the script, doesn't fully understand it, they can, you can tell them, well, just go into the parameters, put in the room name that you want to create. In this case, let's update it to room C. All right. You can give them the Google uh, Sheet unique ID if they, if they uh, want to use a different spreadsheet every time. Uh, that's all they need to do. And you can grab that. The easiest way I've found is just right off the URL from Google Sheets. They can save those parameters and then click on the Run button. So let's turn this on, take a test run. See what happens back in Spark. OK. So again, you can see this processing in real time. Looks like we're getting green lights. Went through once, went through twice. Got a delay, posting the final message, and it's complete. So let's see what happened. Back in Spark, we got a brand new room called Room C. If we look at the people that are in here, these two alternate accounts that I have have been automatically added into the room. And uh, we posted the markdown uh, formatted message right in the room as well. It worked. And uh, I also got the text message that uh, I asked for as, as part of the Tropo action. So that's kind of a medium complexity script. Um, it probably took me, I don't know, three or four hours to, when I was first le learning this tool uh, to kind of figure out how to uh, put things together. Uh, there are a lot of examples. Again, uh, there's a full library. Uh, of existing uh, samples using these services uh, that you can go look at. <coughs> Built.io is cool in that you can actually share these things. Uh, so I can now share uh, the flow that I built uh, with somebody else, some, another member of my team. They can modify it, use it themselves. Uh, these things can get kind of arbitrarily uh, complex. This is uh, a flow that was created by uh, one of my colleagues, Paul O'Dwyer, that's had a little more experience with the tool that he shared with me. And this is kind of a, a full featured uh, SparkBot emergency handling service. All right, so lots of actions, lots of interconnections, lots of logic. We got custom API requests going on. <clears throat> what this does is implements a chat bot uh, so that in a particular Spark room where this bot is listening, you can type a command like create new emergency. You can give it a definition. You can give it a list of people that should be alerted in the case of this, this type of emergency happens. Uh, and then it stores it in an online spreadsheet service. Later on, uh, you can type, you know, emergency started. <clears throat> this script will uh, recognize that different command, go and download the particular list of people that should be alerted in the case of that emergency, uh, and then use Cisco Spark. Uh, and I think this one uses Tropo. Uh, to notify those uh, people, add them to a room, and uh, get the collaboration working. So that's just about it. Um, any questions I can answer for you, be happy to do so. Let's start this up again.
Yes, I believe there is, yes, yeah. The question was, is there exception handling, right? So uh, when I got that error earlier, um, you know, if a particular API or service doesn't give you the response that you expected, you want to be able to handle that gracefully, right? You don't want the whole process to just die. Um, and uh, like, you know, a good programming language, uh, built.io, uh, pretty sure has exception handling where you can work around that, right? So if, if your Tropo accounts run out of cash and you can't make any more SMS messages, uh, then it will continue to add everyone into the room instead of just dying and giving you, giving you an error message. Another question back here? Okay. We're good. Don't forget about the event tonight. It should be a lot of fun. Good music, free beer. Thanks a lot.